Matt, what would you text a girl that, let's say, you became, you just became friends with this girl, yeah, and she didn't even say bye, like on the way out. And and she just like, left. Yeah, everyone just kind of left. No one even. Like, <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Hello, does no one say bye anymore? It bye, not like it's like, stop existing. I say bye, goodbye, man. I have nothing to say to her tonight. So, like I don't really like, say anything. I just like bye. But she didn't say bye or anything. What the fuck? I don't know. It put me in a bad mood. I'm hoping I can tell a joke about her today. I'll <laughs> <That was> show her. <laughs> Do you ever make a new friend and then regret it immediately after? <laughs> <laughs> Important lesson, comedy comes from tragedy. In every way, you know? Uh, do you guys ever, like, get really hungry so you go to your fridge, you realize there's something to eat, and you leave, and you like, come back five minutes later with lower standards of what food is? <laughs> <laughs> Dean, Dean's personality, like from the beginning, is, is pretty much like what you see is what you get. Uh, he was always very chatty, high energy. Um, he was also very like independent. He could entertain himself like at home. It, it didn't. He didn't need consistent, um, you know, like a, a group of friends or anything like that. Although he was always very popular. But uh, his, uh, but he was, he was funny. The, he's he's the clown of the house. Now, actually, I was I was, I was hanging out with my friend and. Uh, my friend's dad found out that he smoked cigarettes, and his dad did this like cliche. I think it's cliche. Like he made his he made his son smoke a whole carton of cigarettes, and I was like, really? You know, like the '60s are out with that shit? Because like that's weird logic, you know? Like that you wouldn't use that logic with everything. Like if you found your daughter with a condom, would you make her fuck guys and put a whole box of everything? <laughs> <laughs> I think not. And if you did, I would like to know who that girl is so I could be in line for the punishment. I think very clever. And uh, he's very young, and uh, my impression of him was, was that he's, he's somebody I think will do well because he's always writing, he's always doing the work. I write down all my jokes as bullet points, so I review what order they were in and wait for something else works better. Right now I'm actually working on this new joke. I have the premise for it pretty well. It took me like four times to write it down correctly. <laughs> um, the premise of this joke is to take into account the people that you have to listen to, you know what I mean? Like, we have world leaders and we have presidents and these are people we follow and some people follow blindly, but you have to be careful, you know? Like, and the joke is basically, it's like a, here's an example, I'm a supervisor at a movie theater and people have to listen to me. But on the other hand, there was a phase in my life where I showed my penis to everybody. So take that with a grain of salt, you know? Like, people are listening to me, and who am I? Right. So the joke surrounds around that type of topic, and I'm just trying to work with it. You can be too eager at times, you know what I mean? But you gotta be that way, you know what I'm saying? You could annoy someone, of course, but starting out, you have to be that way. So I don't, I don't know, you know what I mean? I would say, he could be a little more patient. I, uh, I, can't, I cannot date women. I, I realized I cannot date women because I am a pussy. Because I feel like all girls want something different than a guy. But every girl wants like a guy they can be with to just feel safe and secure and protected with. And I'm not going to do that. Because mm -hmm. I'm a pussy. It's not like it's my choice though. Like, this, is, this is what I have, you know? Like, if I'm on a date with a girl and we're about to get jumped, we're going to get jumped. <laughs> <laughs> he was, uh, he's definitely like a, a talkative character and uh, his conversations are always filled with humor. If you're a sports fan, you can't ever be depressed. <laughs> Why not? I know, it sounds weird. That's not true. No, no, because it is true. I've had people, I've had friends who are like, seriously like, going through a hard time, but all you have to do is like, bring up the game. <laughs> and then they just change. They're like, you know, they're like, oh yeah. And then they go into this whole conversation, and it's totally different than what they were talking about before. You know, the only thing sports can, the only thing sport fans can be depressed about is if, if their if their team loses. Yeah. yeah. There's one weird thing. We saw him that he can't. He just refuses, or he can't ride a subway train, or something like that. Like that's like his big. Uh, he has a problem with that, and I'm just like, dude, why are you living in New York? That's that's all you're ever gonna do. When I was 15, I developed anxiety, or like it happened, I don't know what happened to me. I was sitting at home, I was on my computer, I just had this anxiety attack. So I went to the hospital, I, I was like, like like this, I took like, just like 10 shits, and I, I woke up, and they, after they knocked me out, and I woke up, I was calm, and I felt fine again, like normal. I went onto the train one day, and I said to myself, I was like, huh, I'm in this train, and I can't get out. 
like not that I would want to get out, but like I'm in this tunnel in the dark and I can't get out. I got anxiety on the train and I want to get out. So now I don't get anxiety when I'm outside really. I get it when I'm in the train only because I built in that association. Dean was like little, he was fearless. He would jump off of like, you know, you know, he'd climb trees and he'd, he'd swing high and, and he, he just had no fears. I really believe that sometimes um, being around people who might have those fears or, you know, deliver them to him or say it to him, it kind of like starts to get into your head. You know, the only way to really beat it, the way I've always told them, was you just gotta kind of push past it. You gotta push forward. You have to do it every single day so that you, you know, so that you're not in fear of it anymore. Well, I, I want to be the type of guy that can get onto a plane naked and just go anywhere anytime I want. You know, like, hey, I feel like going to France. <laughs> Let's go to France. Like, but I, I can't do that. Not yet. It's happening. It's gonna happen. I'll make it happen. I speak to one of my friends today who uh, lives in Texas now, and she lives in Texas because uh, her mom is fucking stupid. She was doing bad. She was doing bad in school, and her mom sent her to Texas. Like, she expects to learn morals in Texas. Oh, well, nothing, nothing, nothing. But what happened was. Yeah, it's, pro it's probably because she's, it's probably because she's Mexican, so they want to like terminate oh, her, like put her close to the border. Yes. I know they're getting at me. Holy shit, it's never happened. <laughs> and uh, ah, here, here's a, here's a good thing about Texas. <laughs> I'm fucking with you. I'm fucking with you. I can't even see you. New York is a It's a, I won't say it's a tougher crowd, but I think you've got, you've got to be more direct and more uh, assertive with New York crowds, and they expect. Well, kids, uh, like, he, he's five. It's like I learned about five-year-olds is, or any kind of kid, when they learn something new, they they think in their head. So okay, so I learned something new. So he obviously doesn't know it yet because just because I learned it today, no one knows it. <laughs> And he's just like, Dean, Dean, you know that word that's, you know the word give? Like, yeah, I know, the, I know the word give, Matthew. He's like, you know the letter E in the word give? I'm like, I'm aware of that. <laughs> he's like, you know you can't hear the letter E in the word give? It sounds like this. <laughs> what a fucking asshole. <laughs> New York affects every comedian because there's so many comedians and like compared to like Pennsylvania or wherever people do stand up anywhere else, <laughs> just Pennsylvania. There's there's that there's like less competition, so it's easier to get like in a club quicker. In New York, every Tuesday there's an audition at the Comic Strip Live. I still audition people. Nobody auditions me. I audition people because God, I'm gonna make myself sound like a nice guy, but. I made a lot of money from comics. And if this is what you want to do, and I can help you, I will. I, uh, you guys ever go to the fridge to get something to eat, and you see there's nothing to eat, so you leave and you come back five minutes later with lower standards of what food is? <laughs> <laughs> I did that six times a day. And I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad I got to pass the club, and I, I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm past that part. <laughs> All the greats started here. One day I want to be on the show. Anxiety kind of made me a happier person. Because when I was 15, I would always like I was so shy I couldn't even smile when I walked down the street. Anxiety kind of pushed me more to be happy. Now I'm probably, now I'm really happy. Like my I think life is awesome. Like you don't know what's gonna happen next. And I love I love going to school and performing for my school. I'm gonna be in a play uh, in like November. He's getting better over the years, and I, I was like you know I keep telling him like just talk your way through it. You know you just have to decide that you're not afraid of it and that there's nothing gonna happen, and uh, you know. Just continue doing it. That's the only way to beat your fears. It can definitely beat his anxieties. Uh, it's, it's like I said. It's just something um, that he has to distinguish the difference between something being a fear and uh, protecting you if it's dangerous versus something that's just kind of holding you back. And you know, our fears never really go away, but um, but we're able every day to have to push past it by actually doing it.
Dean believes in himself, and I think that's the biggest thing that will make you succeed in comedy, and he puts in the work and he gets better. He pays attention to how people respond to certain jokes and will drop them if they stop working. Dean has, when I look at him I, and hear him, I don't hear everybody else. And he's got a unique voice, a unique way of looking at things. And name this documentary is Give It Up for Dean David, or in 10 years it could be Dean David Gave It Up. Who knows? Who knows? Like I said, he, he has it. I don't know what it is, but he has it. He has it, kid. I just need a cigar and just be like, you got it. Uh, he's way ahead of the game. Keep that applause going for this next guy, Mr. Dean David, everybody! Oh! <laughs>